Welcome everyone to Freedom Farm. And you can probably see in the background here, it's very windy, which happens a lot during spring. When it, actually, it's windy around here a lot. But anyhow, all that green grass is coming on, and that is a beautiful thing. That also means it's time to sort lambs, because we keep all the females that are born on this farm as we're growing our flock to 350. We're going to show you how we sort them off and how we mark them and uh, what kind of tools that we use that happen to make it handy. So this is our livestock barn and uh, we call it livestock barn because we don't just have them in here for lambing season. We actually have them in here for the winter in general because we collect all the manure that they create while we're feeding them hay and it saves our pastures. The more unique thing is that we have to get all of these guys all sorted off. Now, we have lambs that are quite a bit bigger than others because they're all born at different times. Um, we have one that, the first one born, he's almost the same size as mom now. And uh, we don't take them away from mom. So I know a lot of people wean them. We don't because we don't do an accelerated lambing program. They can stay on mom as long as mom is willing to let them or until it's time for them to go to the sale barn. Now. I'm going to give you an example of the biggest one we have, which just happens to be the oldest as well. He is probably not getting anything from mom, but he still goes over to her and tries to eat off her. He can barely fit under her. So whenever he leaves mom, it's not going to be a bunch of crying or anything else like that. He's probably just going to move on. Um, that's what we've statistically seen. The other thing is, is that we've left them in here before and weaned them from mom, and it turns into a weight loss because they're away from mom for a little bit and they're going from supplementing with mom and hay and, and creep feed to getting absolutely nothing from mom and just eating hay and creep feed. So again, that's just kind of how we do it here. But we got to get these guys all separated out and let's show you what we're going to use. <laughs> Thank you. 
Girl. It, uh, it didn't go as well with the dark colored ones because that marker is kind of hard to get it to show up. Everybody's marked. I appreciate my neighbors helping me out. A lot easier with four people than one. So we will touch base with these guys in the morning. So these guys are gonna go. These guys are gonna go back out to pasture tomorrow. Um, you seen that we threw some hay out for them. And that's just a few bales, a few squares that we had left over that one we kind of want to get rid of because we don't really store squares. Over the winter, they take up space in this barn right here behind me for no reason. The uh, hay that you see them eating, hopefully they eat it all the night. If they don't, it's not a big deal. Whatever they don't eat, we can take out here and give to the horses. Um, it shouldn't be a whole lot left, but there's going to be some left just because it's more than what they really need. And the other thing is that they all sleep overnight. Yeah. Kind of like we do, they, they like to get their, their rest in. And uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll see these guys in the morning. I'm going to insert this video in front of us working the lambs uh, last night because I forgot to talk about it. In case you're wondering the tools we use, these are all from Premier. Basically everything we have that's sheep related we buy from Premier. Um, we have tried some crooks that we found locally at like a farm store and they weren't, they just weren't as good. Um, you know, I mean, if you're really in a pinch, I guess they're better than nothing, but I wouldn't buy them again unless I like absolutely had no choice. However, this is by far our favorite one. We actually have one just like this and we keep it in the side by side all the time. Uh, you can grab their foot with this end and it locks it in, or you can grab their head or their neck rather with this end. Uh, the only thing I don't you know, I'm not as comfortable about on this one is it uh, it is made of plastic so in the colder times I'm a little worried about you know if it's gonna snap on me or break just because plastic does get cold and brittle in the winter or you know when it's cold out um, never broke on us yet so hopefully it stays that way and even if you break this the white part the pole it's got screws through it you could actually take it out and put it on a different one um, it actually, no, they're not the same size. I guess that you could put a different pole on them. But these ones, we can't. What I like about these ones, so this one I like the fact that it's light and it's longer. Uh, this one's aluminum. This one is fiberglass. I really like the hook on it. It's much better than this one because that indent right there really helps you hold the animal. On the other hand, um, not being able to grab their feet I really like the, being able to grab their feet. It's just, it's much simpler than trying to fight with their head because once they've been grabbed a few times by the neck, they kind of understand what's happening. And unless you have a pole that's long enough to reach out and really grab them, they're going to be gone before you really get to them. So just kind of my two cents on that. And then, uh, the others were uh, the sprays. So this is like a spray paint for an animal not the same as spray paint. I wouldn't put spray paint from like Lowe's or Walmart or whatever on your animal. Probably not gonna be good for them. Uh, this is actually safe for them. You can buy these from Premier as also. I got blue because I'm marking all the males blue. And I also grabbed the wax twist marker. I think it's wax. 
and just a twist marker. And uh, I marked the males with both. So they got marked with this right between the shoulder blades. So if this was their back, right? Because I can't. Okay. If I was turned around like this, right? Right between their, their front shoulder blades, got this. And then between their uh, hips on their spine, got this. Mainly because I don't know how long they last. And I'm hoping that they last for like three weeks. Because that's when they're, I'm going to bring everybody back in in about three weeks. And they will be sorted off. We'll take all the ram lambs. They all go to market. And uh, this makes it easier so I don't have to sit there and guess or try to sort everybody. I already know who I need. Just grab all the blue ones. So that was the intent behind it. Like I said, Premier One is where we got all this stuff. Um, I'll put a link in the description. There's no benefit for us if you guys buy from them. Um, you know, we're not sponsored or anything like that. But I'd rather recommend products that I know or I have used and would say I, I use those again, opposed to, you know, telling you, oh, you got to figure it out on your own. All right, we're about to start the next project. Um, I used to have a toolbox right here. And the, uh, the toolbox itself was actually still in decent shape. But the door and where the door mounts has rusted to where you couldn't just throw another door on it. We went ahead and got a new, uh, new toolbox. And uh, Mike's going to come down here and help me so we can mount this. It's going to be a two-person job. But that will be handy because then I won't have to keep tools in the cab anymore. And I can lock them in that toolbox too. Everybody loves that feeling, having your stuff secured. Right, so this one doesn't have any vents or drains. Um, the last one had vents and drains on it, and I think that's what led to the downfall of it, because it kept letting water in, and then it couldn't get out. You guys know the deal on this channel. I bought it because it's made in the USA. I'm not saying buyer's toolboxes are the best. I don't know if they're the best. I don't even know what brand the other one was. Uh, Here, so it's all cleaned up. The spots are well on the camera cleaned up, and Mike's cleaning up the top of the toolbox so we can weld the angle iron to it. And the tires are off because it's time to rotate the tires on the truck. Basically, I take that front one, I'll put it on the outside, on the back dual, and then the back dual outside current is going to go to the inside back dual, and then the current inside back dual goes to the front. You got Mike behind me welding the toolbox on. Now, some of you might be saying, well, Travis, you know how to weld. I say, I do, but not as well as Mike. And considering I don't want this to fall going down the road, it's a little different than farm equipment where if it breaks, generally we're not too far from the house. The truck, we go on long road trips, and I actually have to go on a long road trip this week to Des Moines, so I want to make sure it's not going to fall off. But I have confidence in Mike's weld, more confidence than my own. They didn't bring this all the way forward. Oh, okay. They welded the 
the front of the toolbox was welded to the ah. the bed, which I mean, it worked. Yeah, I mean, I get it, it works, but I'd much rather have the angle iron welded to it and not weld more on. Because this, as you've probably seen when you're welded, it's pretty thin. Yeah. All right, we're going to lift this up so we can get better access underneath. It's tacked in the front and uh, it's against the frame, so theoretically, it should not fall. <laughs> if it does, we'll let it just out. Good. Yeah, it leaned a little bit, but it's holding. Okay. Good. Go ahead. Would you make a higher? Actually, yeah. It's probably easier for me to get under your Easier on my back, too. <laughs> Okay. That'll work. Guaranteed to hold until it comes off, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's on there. 